Hello, and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about presentation skills, communication, leadership, getting past the glass ceiling, and the things that you need to know to be the leader you know you are. Before I get started with our very interesting guest today, I'd like to invite you to take our free four-minute assessment to see where your presentation skills are strong and where perhaps a bit of support could help them be better. That is at speakforresultsquiz.com, www.speakforresultsquiz.com. And that's where you can see where you rate yourself high and where maybe you need a little support to get the results you need and the recognition that you deserve. My guest today is my friend, Amy Barnard Bonn. I have been following Amy since I first met her just because she's so awesome. And she has a whole lot to talk about, especially about the promotability index assessment that she has created, which helps you analyze where you're strong and where you could shore up your strengths. Her official bio is Amy Barnard Bonn is a fortune, a former Fortune Global 50 executive. She's now a consultant to the C-suite and leaders at global companies like Bank of the West, Adobe, The Gap. She's recognized by Forbes as one of the top coaches for legal and compliance executives. She's also a member of Marshall Goldsmith's 100 Coaches. That's huge. If you don't know about that, that's a big deal. She's a guest lecturer at Stanford and UC Berkeley. She's a contributor to the Harvard Business Review, Fast Company, and Compliance Week. And she's a fellow at the Harvard Institute of Coaching. Amy earned her law degree from Georgetown University Law Center and her bachelor's at Tufts. She's been a lifelong diversity advocate. And so Amy has testified for the successful passage of the first laws in the U.S. requiring corporate boards to include women. You can receive her free Promotability Index self-assessment by texting promote me to 4-222. I will put that in the show notes. And you can also get the Promotability Index guidebook in three formats, paperback, PDF, and Kindle. We had a lot to say about how do you think about promotion and how do you know if you are promotable? Here comes my conversation with Amy Barnard Bond. Amy Barnard Bond, I am so happy to finally have you on Speakers Who Get Results. I've been, you've been on my wish list for quite some time, so I'm glad we made it happen. Welcome. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. We've known each other for quite some time, and yes. uh, you do some really amazing stuff. So I'm, I have a whole list of questions for you. And But first, I'd like to ask you, if you had a dream interview with someone who is no longer with us, so you couldn't actually call them up, who would it be? What would you ask them? And who should be listening? Great question. Well, someone who I admired that... Uh... I never, of course, got a chance to meet is Ida B. Wells. Ida a, B. Wells. Okay. And she was born in the late 1800s, lived to the 1930s. And she was a prominent Black American investigative journalist and educator and a very, very early leader in the civil rights movement. She was one of the founders of the NAACP, and she dedicated her whole life to documenting all kinds of atrocities post-emancipation, including lynching in the United States, and owned a newspaper, which was very unusual at the time to have a Black-owned newspaper. So she Especially had Especially for a woman, right? Exactly. She was a phenomenal businesswoman and leader, so I love her for that. She was entrepreneurial. She was mission-based. She was born into slavery in Mississippi and was freed during the Emancipation Proclamation. So she is just that period in history is phenomenal. And she survived everything from having her press burned down to just all kinds of things and just absolutely persisted. So I would love to talk to her about the situation we're in today, uh -huh. what progress we've made, what progress we haven't made, yeah. and what she would advise because she was an incredible strategist. She was able to leverage privileged white women into her cause because of the way she deconstructed and reframed things. That always, you talk about reframing things, something you and I are both, we do a lot, especially with our clients mm -hmm. is, you know, how do you reframe things? She was incredible. We will put a link to information about her in the show notes. Absolutely. 
Thank you. Yes, I, I would definitely go to that. Go and listen to you. So, Amy, you have, you do so many things. You've been Fortune 50 company, right? Yes. And all of that. I've, I've just read your, just in the intro, I read your official bio, but so much of all the various things that you do. The thing I particularly want to ask you about is the Promotability Index, which is a leadership self-assessment and a guidebook. It's an excellent guidebook. Can you tell me please what it is, who should use it, and how does it make for a better workplace? Sure. Well, I was motivated in 2020 to create a leadership assessment. And then after I created it, a lot of people asked for a guidebook to accompany that. Mm -hmm. I made the assessment free. And then during the pandemic, had some extra time, so published the guidebook. So essentially, the Promotability Index Assessment is an 82 question self assessment that anybody can easily take. It enables anyone in any industry, anywhere along their career path up to the C-suite to really use the PAI assessment and the guidebook to discover how their skills stack up against the five key elements that organizations use when deciding who to invest in and who to promote. And having been a CHRO and, and a CAO and different executive roles for 20 years, I wanted to help reverse engineer promotions. So Amy, you do so many amazing things, but what I particularly want to ask you about today is the Promotability Index. It's a leadership self-assessment and it's an excellent guidebook. I have a copy, <laughs> and, but tell us a little bit about what it is, who should use it, and why does it make the workplace a better place? Well, in terms of who should use it, anyone who's interested in continuing to learn and always be employable and potentially also to accelerate and climb the corporate ladder or wherever mm -hmm. they are and get more and more responsibility should read it. And mm -hmm. it, it assesses, you assess yourself against the five key elements that lead to promotability and constant employability with a growth mindset. And it's the five elements that employers and organizations look to when making decisions with limited resources on who mm -hmm. to invest in, who to promote. And so you mentioned the five key elements. What are they? Sure, there's self-awareness, uh -huh. external awareness, strategic thinking, thought leadership, and executive presence. And can you tell us a little bit more about each of those. Sure, so self-awareness is a degree to which you know yourself, what your values are, what motivates you, and what your working preferences are, like the type of people you like to work with, the, the size of company, whether you're a fast-driven, fast-paced results person, or whether you're a consensus-driven, a little bit slower, cross-collaborator. All of us have different styles, and there's no one right style that's right, but it's good to find a good fit in the company for your personal strengths, for satisfaction. It can be very stressful for people to be in a company or to work for a boss or in a team that is really at odds with how they prefer to work. We can all accommodate, you know, 10 to 20% longer if we have to, but it doesn't usually, it's not as easy or joyful for us. Well, um, one of the things that, that I talk about a lot and I hear about a lot is how it's important to have multiple points of view and multiple learning styles in a team because everybody brings each person brings brings the elements that need to come together to make the the whole greater than the sum of its parts so how would this fit in well in a common the promotability index is neutral to styles it's okay. around more core it's not a personality test i use those in my coaching but this is around core competencies that are important regardless of your style, such as I'm sure you would agree with this, such as communication and speaking. Mm -hmm. The higher you want to go in a in an organization with rare exceptions, you need to be a good communicator and yes. very comfortable on stage, especially at the Fortune 500. Mm -hmm. And you have to exude gravitas. So I break down executive presence thanks to Cokewall, which is a, a wonderful resource in terms of research. They researched and defined executive presence, which I appreciate because it's often tossed around without a definition and it feels fluffy and not actionable. And it also divided it into three areas that anyone can improve on if they put the work in. So the first is communication skills, good speaking mm -hmm. skills, good written skills. The second is gravitas, having a point of view, having it heard, being calm under pressure and mm -hmm. being a, a voice of reason, you know, man, emotional management, self-management. It and comes the from third, the word gravity. So being right. grounded in who you are and your own worth, I've always yes. thought. Yes. Yes. And then the third and lesser, so it was only attributed 5% of, of executive presence, is professional appearance. And uh -huh. I take that to mean well-groomed, 
and appropriately dressed for your workplace culture. There's certainly been a lot of push on that lately in a, in a good way, and we'll see where it settles out. But they're very conservative organizations like Wall Street who expect you to wear a suit every day and they're not going to change all the way down to Hollywood who gets a lot more in artistic professions, hairdressers, hairstylists, you know, makeup yeah. artists, fashion, and they get a lot more leeway. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then everything else, most everything else is in between. And of course, if you're a hairstylist, but you're not comfortable wearing wild clothing, then maybe that's not the place for you. So, or vice versa. Yeah. Or they, or they tolerate it. I find hairstylists to be some of the most tolerant people, actually. Yeah. Well, let's say that one of the professions in which being, being loud and proud and wearing bold colors or in a culture where wearing bold colors is important, you have to see whether that's going to fit who you are. Let me ask you then again about, I found this, this guidebook was fascinating and very useful. What is the key element that people underestimate? I would say in my coaching, what I find is the key element people don't focus on as much is, is their external awareness in terms mm -hmm. of how people appreciate the impact of their actions on other people and what perception, what their brand is, which is a popular phrase right now, but it's really about how do you show up to others? What are their perceptions of you? A Harvard Business Review published my article, promotions aren't just about your skills, they're about your relationships. Mm -hmm. And promotions aren't always fair or rational. And when it comes down to promotions, your skills and knowledge and abilities are often just the ticket to the game. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily of themselves get you promoted. Right. Um, you need to be good at what you do, but at the end of the day, people are often surprised and shocked to find that maybe they haven't built the support network or the sponsorship that they need to have speaking for them in the room when it happens, which is not where they, they are. Someone needs to stand up for you, usually two levels above. Be aware of your work, understand who you are. A lot of people who don't have as much experience, I find, think that their boss alone has the power to promote them. And that's mm -hmm. not how organizations usually work. It well, usually and... has to be. Yeah. And what if your direct manager doesn't like you, is threatened by you, mm -hmm. is doing the best they can to claim your successes as they, as it was their idea? One of the common things people, clients come to me for is to mm -hmm. do that. What do you say to somebody who says, I have all these ideas and then my boss takes them, considers them his own and reports them as his ideas? There's a specific question and then a general question. I mean, a general boss that doesn't support you or that you don't get along with isn't going to result in a lot of support or advancement for you. So I think you need to think about really hard about why you're there. If you have the financial cushion to go elsewhere or look for another job, you can try to work the system and find other sponsors in the organization or make a lateral move eventually, or you can pray that your boss will go away. But it's, but it is limiting. And I have found it very rare that someone has been able to move with that same manager in place without leaving the company. Talk to us a little bit more about sponsors and the the difference between say a mentor and a sponsor. Right. I've well, heard mentors, you talk about that. Let's let's define sure. that. Sure. A mentor is is someone who takes you on voluntarily, ideally. I don't find it works very well when they're assigned, although there's a lot of well-meaning programs out there. But ideally, you just find a match with someone. They either remind mm -hmm. you of yourself when you were younger. The mentor relationship is usually someone who's more senior and experienced than you are, who's offering to give back and who sees something in you that, that they genuinely want to help develop. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's beneficial to the mentor as well to be mentored up especially by the next generation, just to stay current and understand how they're coming across. But it's usually a top-down kind of thing going out mm -hmm. for lunch. I've, I've been very fortunate to have mentors. You can cultivate a mentor, you can ask. And so I would di differentiate a sponsor in that you can't really ask for a sponsor. A sponsor is earned. A sponsor is someone who sees your work either from afar or hears about you. Someone puts a powerful comment in their ear and they start noticing mm -hmm. you. And you may not even know that you have one, it's great if you know that you do, because then you can build the relationship more, mm -hmm. get more visibility with them, and perhaps they can be a mentor and a sponsor. But a sponsor is the kind of person who, in what HR would call a nine box meeting, which is the format that most companies use when deciding and rating employees and deciding who's close to promotion or who's a high potential. You want someone to say, you know, I've seen them, I know their work, I think they're a high potential in those mm -hmm. meetings. Someone who has power, who's well-placed, 
and who when they speak for you, everyone listens. And then there, by just saying that, of course, everyone else in that room who also has power is hearing that as well. So that's a very special thing. And Carla Harris, who's one of my favorite executives, is a Wall Street financier and opera singer, um, mm -hmm. whom I know you'll appreciate, has a wonderful TED talk on this, who's going to speak for you. And she's yeah. fantastic. It's a very powerful TED talk. It's it is awesome. a very powerful TED talk, yeah. yeah. Go into this a little deeper because it's so important. I find very often women especially have all sorts of networks with people on the same level, people who are peers. And then, but they're kind of afraid to ask someone who's a couple of levels higher to be a mentor or a sponsor. How could somebody appreciate that or get the courage to ask? Well, I think if you, it's better that your mentor not necessarily be your boss. Ideally, they're already doing that as part of their job. They support you. So you want people, you want to strengthen and broaden the information you're getting about how to do your job and how to mm -hmm. continue to grow and scale as a leader. So I would try to find someone that you have something in common with that, that seems to like you or get an introduction to one. It can also be really powerful outside your organization. It can be a little harder to connect with them, but, but even if you connect once or twice a year, that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think you just, if someone takes an interest in you, then I think that's the opening. I think mm -hmm. it's hard to do a cold call, you know, because it's hard for someone to say no. And some people are already mentoring like four or five people. And so you may catch them at a rough time. So saying no might not necessarily even be about you. It just may literally be about their, their level of commitment and wanting to do what you ask, but realizing they're not capable at the time because of their other commitments. Mm -hmm. So... I'd say you do need to have a bit of a thick skin about hearing no and just, you know, not make it a, a pressure or a desperate request. But um, not personal. Right. Yeah. And make it make it easy for them to say no and make it seem easy, like be easy to be a mentee. That's mm -hmm. another thing. Like you go to them, you go to their office or their favorite coffee shop or do it by phone or whatever it is, you know, to ask, you know, how can I make this easy on you? Because they're doing you a huge favor. Uh, and I would say going back to something you said earlier about the promoting is that having external validation, so having a third party say how great you are, always counts for more than you saying how great you are. Yes. So I'm curious, as I was reading through, I was rereading my way through the the guidebook, the Promotability Index guidebook, and and looking at some of this, I've recently had several conversations with people who want to be promoted, they think they deserve a promotion actually, and they're really not qualified. So how can we as business people measure, are we really qualified for that promotion? Because you certainly don't want to be promoted and then and then have do a terrible job. I mean, are there are people who do want that, but yes, let's hope. <laughs> let's hope that nobody who listens to this podcast wants to be promoted unless they know they're going to do a good job. Are these people being told that they're not qualified? I'm thinking about people, you were talking about external awareness. I was hmm. recently at the California Conference for Women, which okay. has a, a big area where people can talk to a career coach. Hmm. And I wasn't part of that, but I knew several of the career coaches. And that was a recurring theme from the coaches who had would have someone come to them, uh, usually a junior, someone who was fairly junior in their company and say, I should be promoted. How do I get this promotion without having figured out, well, A, was the company, is the company, do they have the money to promote anybody now? Are they expanding or contracting? It was just really more about the external awareness, I think. I thought that the promotability index, letting you figure out if you are promotable might be a help. You no, know, had I been had I been there, I might have recommended it. I would have recommended it. I think you raise a really great point. And I, I wrote another article on this. I was asked by Harvard because there was a, a person, they have a ask an expert column that I hadn't known about actually until they, they and it was for their younger ascend, mm -hmm. uh, which is typically like under 40 professionals. And this person said they'd worked in the same job for four years, had gotten nothing but stellar reviews, still wasn't getting promoted. When they went to their boss, their boss kind of basically put it on the back burner and said, to them, vague things like it's not up to me, you know, I'm not sure yet, that kind of thing. And so I was delighted to get this question because I see so much frustration and 
people don't educate themselves enough about what it takes to get promoted. And so I was able to finally share the other side. So it's it's worth reading if if someone's listening and they're in this position. We'll so post a link. So. Yeah, it's called Why Am I Not Getting Promoted? I said, look, if, if everything you say is true and you're an amazing performer and you know, you're doing a great job, a couple of reasons why you might not be getting promoted. You already raised one. They might not have the money. Number two, they may never have the position available. This person happened to be in an audit capacity, which is an overhead function. It's not a money generating function, which I'm very familiar with having been in overhead roles, executive roles my whole life. Mm -hmm. So fighting for raises for my team, understanding what I can do and what I can't do in terms of the company overhead, because that's a, that has to be a percentage of the gross. You know, and Can you just pause for a second and define it for our international listeners? Overhead is a profit is means that the job is not making a profit for the business, uh -huh. like sales, product development, arguably some of the other functions that are very close to bringing in the money to support the business existence. Mm -hmm. And so if companies have too high of an overhead, if they overstaff overhead positions like legal, HR, marketing, they will not survive. So a smart CEO and HR looks at that and they realize, okay, we can handle this much cost overage to run our business, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Operations is important. Legal is important. You know, having an ethical culture is important. Hiring, all this is so important. And it still can't be over a certain percentage of the company is going to go down and then no mm -hmm. one has a job, right? So it can be that reason. I suggested this person ask their boss, hey, has this position ever existed before? What's my job family? Where am mm -hmm. I in the job family? Because most smart companies in HR have a progression and a job family. They do market pay salaries to make sure that you're paid according to a range that is mm -hmm. validated mm -hmm. by professional salary companies to see how are things going up or down for the profession mm -hmm. and some professions go down that's another thing most people always expect it to continue to go up but with ai and other stuff we know some professions are going to be downgraded in terms of their value because it can be automated so you mm -hmm. also have to watch out for that you already mentioned another one what cycle is your business in mm -hmm. if you're laying off people it might not be a great time to ask for a raise or mm -hmm. a promotion or maybe the shuffling of the chairs will lead to opportunity but you need to be savvy about how you ask your questions and when because you can lose credibility with your manager about being completely out of touch if you go in and ask for a promotion or raise the day after they've just announced half of your team is being laid off i'm using an extreme example i hope mm -hmm. no one would have the lack of empathy to do that but my point is what's going on who else has gotten promoted? Look at their trajectory. How long do they work for the company? Another thing, some companies like it or not. I, I had one guy I was coaching and I, his boss said, well, yeah, I'm interested in promoting him, but I, got, I was here 15 years before I got my first promotion. This mm -hmm. guy was going to do the same thing. And we wound up fast tracking it a little better, but that was his initial reaction. And that's not an illegitimate reaction. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a difference in generational. This was an old school manufacturing American Midwest company. This is not a mm -hmm. high tech startup where there's, they can fluff around job titles. And, you know, there was a step progression and people work there 30 years and it's a very different culture. Mm -hmm. And it didn't mean that you weren't a good worker or valued if you weren't getting a promotion. So that's the other thing I would think about is why do you want it? Are you attaching your self-worth to the promotion? Ah. And are you being fair to yourself when you do that? Really look around. If people are moving every two years and you're not, okay, that would be hard to take possibly. And then maybe you need to really look at yourself. Mm -hmm. But if it's a company where there's only like one or two promotions a year, or they've never had anyone above your role, or there's been a higher a pay freeze for executives, which a lot of my clients had to stave mm -hmm. off riffs. Again, like you may have to do your part for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different if you don't think you're being paying equitably or the same as the person doing the same job at the same level next to you. And I've written a lot on pay equity. That's a different issue though, right? But my hope is that this will enable people to appreciate that's beyond skills. The promotability index does not teach you core technical job skills. I yeah. can't do that for thousands of professions. But what I can do is tell you, regardless of what your profession, how you need to show up to begin to be noticed in the mm -hmm. right way. It's and all who are constantly, Yeah, and people who are constantly asking, I had one employee who's fantastic. She just reached out to me for some advice actually, so she's on my mind, but she was so difficult to manage because she was so demanding and it was all about her. She did fantastic work. Mm -hmm. I loved having her on my team. You mentioned earlier having diversity of team. Mm -hmm. She was my hardcore, had to be a star, you know, always right. And she usually was right. She was remarkable at, at her job. And there was a cost to my team dynamic on morale mm -hmm. 
because she Mm -hmm. sucked a lot of air out of the room. And I didn't enjoy managing her as much because she always had an agenda of getting promoted in every conversation and I couldn't mentor her as well. Uh huh. And she got defensive with feedback. So guess what? She got less feedback from me. That's another thing is you gotta be open to feedback. Managers have a difficult enough job as it is. So make it easy, psychologically safe, be proactive about asking for feedback and genuinely be accepting of listening to it, even if you disagree with it. Yes, that's a sort of story I've heard so many times and has has happened to me, someone like that. And as a manager or a boss, then yeah, you know, the, the results might be great, but they're no fun to work with. So why give them the promotion? Let me ask five or six questions, all trying to come out of my mouth at once here. Amy, if you're not sure how to start a conversation about a promotion with your manager, what's a good way to start? A great way to start, number one, is separate it completely from your compensation discussion timeline. So usually that is anywhere from fourth quarter to first quarter, Mm -hmm. usually around January, February, if people are on a calendar year, fiscal year. And it's important to separate it from so that it's forward looking and the manager isn't already all caught up in all the work they had to do Mm -hmm. for their entire team or department around compensation. You want to catch them in in a relaxed easy environment so it can be a discussion so mm-hmm. my number one tip is make it a discussion a lot of people feel like they have to go to battle what they're owed mm-hmm. and that is the wrong attitude to take if you mm-hmm. feel that way you probably you know might have, shouldn't be working there because it, it needs to be a dialogue mm-hmm. so create a safe space for your manager to give you candid feedback about where you are in the mm-hmm. pay range what's possible and doable both within the business environment within the pay range hr may have certain practices and protocols people usually are unaware of what their colleagues make there is an equilibrium and a fairness component that needs to go into that it may be years Mm -hmm. of service it may be someone has a credential you don't have ask about all that stuff you know maybe they'd suggest you getting a credential and maybe there's an education fund at your company that would pay for part of it if not maybe you need to invest in yourself on i always did that ongoing education and investing in yourself is an important thing you can't always rely on your employer to just give you this stuff that's not a part of the contract Mm -hmm. it reminds me of the whole thing about making it a discussion and then be aware the this is the external awareness you're talking about yes and the self-awareness be aware of what you do your homework (laughs) that's yes so many people don't do the homework and then they they create stories in their head about mm. why they haven't been promoted or why the promotion went to somebody else. One more question. One thing that happens a lot, especially with the sort of people who show up at my door, is someone who's been with a company for 10, 15 years and they feel like they're taken for granted and they're seeing the new hires come in making more money you know getting all sorts of attention and the good steady faithful susan who's doing her job and things don't go wrong is taken for granted and ignored if you're susan what could you do about being promotable take the promotability index i would see where my weak spots are and what's valued by the company I would share my results with my manager and I'd say, hey, I just found this tool. I'm really interested in continuing with the company. I love it. I've been here a long time and I'd like to keep learning and growing and getting more opportunities, whether that's stretch opportunities or a raise or promotion or working on a cool cross-functional project. So I'm not bored if I've been there for 20 years, right? And say, so I'm going to give this to you and I'd like for you to rate me on these things. I want to validate my self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. and then have a discussion with you around where are the gaps and where should I really invest? Is it speaking? Is it building more relationships? Is it thought leadership and writing some pieces either for internal or external around my level of expertise? Is it I need to be building better relationships with my peers or stepping up and volunteering for more things? And you learn a lot that way because you're you're presenting a shared language, which Mm -hmm. is very specific, which is one of the goals of the Promotability Index is to take subjectivity Mm -hmm. out of the promotions process and put as much objectivity in there 
as possible because that's when we get to more of a meritocracy as opposed to subjective bias creeping in mm -hmm. and just people I'm comfortable with getting promoted, mm -hmm. right? So questions you can ask is, so here's where I see myself now. How do you see me? It's really what you're saying. Uh, you know, is this what I need to be working on? What skills and abilities do I need to be developing to do, say, what so-and-so is doing? Because that looks really cool to me. And I would love to do something like that at one point. You know, what do I need to be developing? You know, or is the next level possible? at the company for me here. Mm -hmm. And then I've had some clients probably like you have had to make a decision when they get possibly a lukewarm response because they may have missed their wind window of opportunity. I feel like there's a window of opportunity for everyone at every company. And if you're really a go-getter, it's usually between three and five years mm -hmm. in job shifting. And some people just stay. And one of the number one mistakes women make specifically is to think that their achievements will speak for themselves. Ah, uh, yes. And they don't. You have to and, tell people what you're good at. That, look, that is a huge part of the work I do. Yes, exactly. There's a right way and a wrong way. We all yes. know that annoying braggart. So I'm yes. not recommending anybody do that. But there is a savvy political way to do it. There's tons of stuff you know, written about it. And there are ways to be confident and mm -hmm. secure and give credit to others mm -hmm. and be a good colleague and own your work. And yes. so if you've been sitting there for 20 years and you've done none of that, you're going to really have to work to shift perceptions. Yeah. And again, I find many clients are, are faced with, and sometimes in their fifties, which can be a, a real challenge with ageism to decide, am I going to leave the sure thing, even though I'm mm -hmm. completely bored and feel undervalued and I know I'm getting underpaid or have I just made my bed and I need to lie in it at this point because it's too late. Yeah. Very impersonal decision, but I was delighted. I was coaching one woman. She's fantastic at her job. There was never going to be a promotion there. I yeah. finally got that out of her boss. Like I, I get real clarity on that, which is at least she knows, right? Not mm -hmm. what she wanted to hear, but she knows. And so I said, okay, there's never going to be a, another role at that position. Everyone's young enough. They're staying, they're happy with them. So unless something cataclysmic or, or happens. There's, or there's someone else who's division is being merged with another division sure. and they All have kinds to of give stuff. give him that position and so they're the position that you'd be moving into mm -hmm. is actually already promised to someone else who they can't afford to fire so many yeah. things that can be going on behind the scenes that managers aren't always privy to share that's happening they, to one of the clients I'm working okay with. Yeah, yeah and they themselves might even, not even know the manager may be being denied because the person ahead of them knows something else that's coming and they're not at liberty to tell yet mm -hmm. Right, especially at publicly traded companies. So my client, we talked about it and I said, you're making a great income. She's already benchmarked, talked to recruiters, everything. So she already knew her pay was really good. She just was bored and wanted to move up. So it wasn't the money for her, which I totally appreciated. We circled everything and realized this probably like 85% chance won't happen here. Mm -hmm. And she decided, you know, I'm pretty lucky where I am. I'm making a really good six figure income in Silicon Valley and my kids are independent. I can now lead my own life. I don't have to work as hard. Yeah. And so I'm going to stay where I am. And I said, we had a really long talk about the pros and cons of her mm -hmm. leaving somewhere else, starting completely over, probably having to take a pay cut to earn her stripes to work back up again somewhere mm -hmm. else and not having the job security because she worked at a company that still had a good severance plan and a bunch of old school benefits that are at question at a lot of other places. And she was settled and happy when we ended our engagement. And then six months later, and I, I don't tell people what to do. People have, this is their life, right? They have to decide. Yeah. You can just put the choice in front of them. Six months later, I was really delighted. I saw her appear on my LinkedIn news and she popped up at a really high growth tech company that everyone would know if I said the name and has probably used them personally. And she was you know an assistant general counsel there and she wanted to be general counsel and so she'd taken a lateral and i was so happy for her that a she, lateral like, move right that she decided yes. to go for it you know because mm -hmm. she'd always been like i should be a general counsel i should be a general counsel and you can say that forever but if the market doesn't see you that way and if you show up with that specific attitude it's not going to happen if you're bitter if you're entitled there's some humility about all of this Mm -hmm. Leaders need a combination of humility and courage to keep learning and growing that, that humility and vulnerability to say, what can I do better? I'm not mm -hmm. perfect. It's clearly, I'm doing something that's not working. So oh. Amy, this has been so interesting. I could keep going, but I know you have appointments and I have appointments. Let me ask you out of this whole conversation. If someone says this, is, she's talking about me. What is the first thing someone should do? Oh, to take the assessment, basically. Oh, yeah, I would say take the assessment. If you like it, you're welcome to buy the guidebook that gives you over 30 exercises mm -hmm. to get better at the things you've 
decided you're not as good at. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very powerful if you feel comfortable sharing it with your leader, that that alone, just sharing that shows you're a go-getter, you're open, you're willing to learn, you already get brownie points for just sharing that. Mm -hmm. And then you get this great discussion. So, you know, and people don't pay enough attention to development. Everything's Mm -hmm. looking back, like, what'd you do last year? Here's your rating, here's your... So my goal was to kind of try to keep it fun, choose your own adventure. You can read the book backwards, forwards, start in the middle. I love doing that myself. So... Um, you can just say, okay, I only care about executive presence right now. And then next mm-hmm. year you can pick another one. You can come back to the promotability index annually. I recommend taking it annually because it's if you've been doing the work, it's exciting. You're like, oh my God, I, I, this is paying off. I'm I can do like, this. moving yeah. ahead. Yeah, it's yeah. self. And you don't have to share it with anyone if you don't want to. You can do it with a buddy. You can do it with a friend, but it's super cool. And I created the questions that also raise insight because a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, until I took the assessment, I never knew some of these things were important. I didn't know mm-hmm. my boss cared about this. So mm-hmm. there's even just aha moments in taking the quiz. It's free. It's on my website. If you buy the book, it's in a QR code. It's mobile friendly. Try to keep it super fun. And yeah, I would start with that. And then I have lots of resources that are more specific around salary negotiations, things yes. like that on my website. You should absolutely be following Amy Barnard Bond. I follow been following her for quite ever since I first met her. And, and whenever she pops up on my LinkedIn feed and I say, okay, <laughs> gotta read this one. I'm not gonna skim past. <laughs> Thank you. Amy, thank you so much for having been a guest on Speakers Who Get Results. Oh, before I forget, you said you had a favorite leadership quote. Ah, yes. My favorite quote is from Peter Drucker, mm-hmm. and it is, you should not change yourself, but create yourself. That means build around your strengths and get rid of your bad habits. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay. We're going to put that in the transcript. That'll be one of our our quotable quotes there. And Elizabeth, I forgot to tell you, I'm happy to give away a digital copy of my book. So if you want to have the first person that hears this and stays to the end with us, Uh um, send you an email. I'll then coordinate with you to send them a digital book on email. Excellent. All right. That's all going to be easily findable on the website when you hear this. If you want a digital copy of the book, it's really good. I highly recommend it. (laughs) Then email me and I will tell Amy who the first person is. So Amy Barnard Bond, thank you so much for joining us on Speakers Who Get Results. This has been Speakers Who Get Results. If you found this interesting, please tell your friends, tell your colleagues, leave us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. That's the one that counts in the statistics. And in the meantime, this is Elizabeth Bachman. I'll see you on the next one. We have just concluded another great episode of Speakers Who Get Results with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. If you got value from today's episode, please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues. You may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources. Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes. And thanks for tuning in.